Hi lovelies, it's Noelle and today I'm coming with another wrap up this month and I have some great ones, some disappointing ones, a DNF one which means a do not finish one and for those who are new I love talking about books and welcome to booktube which is basically people who love to talk about books on YouTube. Thanks for coming to my channel so let's just get started. So this month I wanted to start off with Shadow and Bone because the new TV series is out and I wanted to be part of that fandom. I've never read the Grisha trilogy or Grishaverse, um, which is basically the world that this takes place in. And this is by Leigh Bardugo, which I... did I read any of her other stories? Yes, I did. I read Ninth House. I did Dina, that one, but I... I'm going to try it again this year on Halloween to see if I do like Ninth House, but anyway. I did read Shadow and Bone. This one was kind of mediocre, and not in a bad way. It was just, I loved, here's the thing, I loved the story, and I loved the elements of the story, but it nothing really excited me to the point where I wanted to, to love this story. So for example, there's supposed to be this giant ball that happens every year at this kingdom, this palace. It's a big deal to all the people in the land. And we don't even get really that much of a scene of this ball, so I, I wasn't really excited for it. And then also, kind of the romance was just meh, like mediocre, and even the ending was kind of mediocre. It almost felt a little bit rushed toward the end, but nothing really concluded or happened in the end. So I haven't read the second or third book yet, so I'm hoping the second book gets a lot more like angsty and just... I think more gripping is what I was hoping from this because I just kind of felt like I said mediocre through the whole thing. I, I I love the characters though, so I don't know why this felt mediocre to me. Maybe I just need to think on it more, but this one was just okay. I gave it a four star, so that's kind of how I feel about it is that it's a solid four. Nothing too mind-blowing in my opinion, but maybe that's because I've just read so many great other fantasies that have the same tropes in them and they do it better than Shadow and Bone. Maybe that's why. I'm not sure. I'm still thinking on this one, but it was a solid four. It was okay. The next read, it was something I was looking forward to because the hype has been so big on book two for this book, and that is The House of Hollow. I have heard people just praise this book as well, so I came into this with really high expectations and it definitely met, but I do have to say, by the, when I finished the book completely and I put it down, I didn't know if I really loved it or liked it. Only because the story is so... it kind of has like bunny vibes by Mona Awad. If you've read that, you're just kind of mind blown at the end. You're like, what did I just read? Like, this is so weird. That's how I felt with this one. I, when I closed the book, I was like, that was so weird. <laughs> that was so weird. But I loved the world building in here because this character, she goes to basically another world and the, the, dis, the reveal and display and explanation of this world was just crazy. Like nothing I've ever read before. It was so weird and so haunting. I just felt like if you were lost in magical forests or a magical underworld, or a magical kingdom where everything gets lost and stays lost. It was, it was so weird. I'm not, I'm not even explaining the weird parts because those are, that was not weird, but it was more, I don't, I don't want to give too much away, so I'm going to hold my tongue. It's one of those books where you put down and you're like, I really need to discuss this with someone because I don't know if I fully understood it, which I did. It was, Full of anticipation because you don't get the answer to the story until the last like 20 30 pages so this book does make you read and work for it toward the end to get the reveal but the plot twist it made me uncomfortable at times but very interesting and yeah like I said definitely has bunny vibes so if you haven't read bunny either and you're like what are you talking about I highly recommend you read either this one or bunny because if you haven't read a book that just blows your mind and you're just completely weirded out by it and you're like wow that was so bizarre but I liked it that's what these books give you that's how I feel about this one I probably won't be rereading this one because I feel like I don't have to like I, f I do feel like I understood it 
And and people would ask like, oh, does the cover kind of explain or does the cover go with the story? And I would say yes. This cover, this you see, goes with the story. It's it's weird. It it looks just as weird as it is just as weird as the cover. Which the cover is beautiful. I like the cover. But if you're like, what is this? Then I'll say you have to read it to understand it because that's what I did and I liked it. I don't know if I loved it. <laughs> I did give it five star because definitely was bizarre. Now these next two books I'm about to talk about are DNFs, which mean do not finish. The first one I'm going to talk about is actually no, wait, this is not a DNF. My bad. I read this book, but I almost DNF'd it. I have a lot to say about this story. So I felt like part of the story there was things that felt forced to me for example the murder felt forced the something with this book didn't sit well with me I don't know what it was and there were so many I felt like random moments that were unnecessary that didn't need to be revealed were revealed so for example the talk about sexual identification between these children and then also the trauma the discussion of trauma with these children they were handled so weird and it was really random in my opinion i don't know i didn't i mean i can see why some people like this world and how it's about well, let me explain what it's about children have always disappeared under the right conditions slipping through the shadows under a bed or at the back of a wardrobe tumbling down rabbit holes and into old wells emerging somewhere else but magical lands have little need for used up miracle children Nancy tumbled once, but now she's back. The things she experienced, they change a person. The children under Miss West's care understand all too well, and each of them is seeking a way to get back to their own fantasy world. So that's kind of what the story is about, is about these children who are all in this, I guess, boarding school orphanage that are brought together, basically, that have experienced these other worlds that they have in their past gone to whether that's when they were children or just throughout life so they're all different ages of children and some people have gone to wonderland some people have gone to like candyland some people have gone to fairyland and these children they come back from these worlds and they're not the same they can't experience life the way it was because they wish they were back in their magical world that they got to experience so they're trying to find their way back, but they can't. And so it's kind of about how these children are trying to cope with living back in reality when all they want to do is live back in their, whether that was an illusionary world, some people believe, or this magical world that was real, but they can't go back to. So it's about them coping with reality, but I just, it was, it was just, there was a lot of random things in here that I just, I was, this wasn't an enjoyable read to me. I don't see the appeal. I don't see the hype. It was such a short story and not a lot happened. There was a lot of dialogue between the children and then there was a murder mystery thrown in there and I don't know. I, I won't be continuing the series, which is sad because I did pick up In an Absent Dream. Before I read Every Heart of Doorway, I was wanting to read this one, which is also part of the series, because it has to do with apparently the goblin market. And like I said, after reading Winter Song, which has to do with goblins, I was like, I want to read more books about goblins or a goblin market or just that any story that has those elements in there. And apparently this does, but I just did not like the first one so much that I'm not willing to give this one a chance sadly i won't be continuing the series this one didn't sit well with me i don't want to give it a rating because if i give it a rating it may be like a two or one star but so i'm not going to rate it i'm just going to say it wasn't my cup of tea maybe it's some other people's cup of tea but it wasn't mine the next one i read was a curse so dark and lonely now this one i got exactly 50 percent the way through and i didn't finish it but this one i don't want to say i dnf'd it i want to say that i put it on pause because i was really enjoying this one i love the dialogue between the two main characters and this is a beauty and the beast retelling and it has to do with a girl who she is kidnapped into this kingdom where the king he needs a princess to break his curse or just a girl to break his curse so he sends his royal guard to go and basically kidnap a girl each season to bring back to him and he's gonna try and swoo her and make her fall in love with him so he could break his curse well of course that doesn't go according to plan many 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 times for him 
So he ends up being stuck with this girl. She is the main character and she is like, no, I'm not going to fall in love with you. Just letting, just letting you know right off the bat. And he was like, okay, but let me try and make you fall in love with me, basically. So I, I really enjoyed this one. I'm going to say I put it on pause because it's not because I didn't like this one that I put it down. It's because I was actually, some new releases just came out. And I was like, I really, really, really want to pick them up. So I only put this down just so I can read some other great books that actually caught my eye. This one didn't kind of keep me interested enough to read all the way through. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put it on pause for now. I'm halfway through. I'm sure I'll finish the other half in like a month or so. I'm not gonna read this one because I haven't finished it. I also read this month, Vicious, which this one is very interesting to me because I've read some other V.E. Schwab, which is the author of books, and her books are kind of like a hit and miss with me, and they're never really my favorite. I don't know why, but I do like the concepts and the storylines that E.E. E. Schwab writes about, so I'm always willing to give her other books a go, but like I said, they never really become beloved books that I love. They're always like three or four stars. And Vicious to me was almost a five star. It was definitely a four star and I couldn't put it down. It was so much fun. This is about basically, let's just say it outright. This is about two bad boys and they're like bad boy level a thousand percent and they're both really, really smart. They go to this, I think it's an Ivy League school. Either way, it has a dark academia feel and they're both in school and they both decide to become extraordinary. Becoming extraordinary means when you're on the brink of death and you basically get some supernatural or some powers because you come back a different person. So they're both trying to pursue this and wow it was it was really good. These two boys are crazy. Somehow you're rooting for them and they're both terrible people. You like him at the same time. It, it was a lot of fun. I did like this one. I gave it four star. It wasn't like a favorite, but it was probably one of my favorite out of all of the Schwab books. Vicious was probably my favorite one that she's written that I read so far. So yeah, I think I gave that one four, 4.5 star. It was fun. The last story that I read for this month was a Nature of Witches. I read this because I was in a very, very witchy mood and I was like, I need a book that definitely is a fantasy. I definitely wanted another witch story only because I finished reading A Midnight Bargain and this had witches in it. So I, I read this previously. I was just in the mood for witches again because this one just put me in such a witchy mood. So I picked up The Nature of Witches and I loved love this one. So this one has to do with seasonal witches. So witches each have strengths and weaknesses depending on their season. So some witches are autumn witches, some are winter witches, some are summer witches, and some are spring witches. And depending on which season they're in is when they're most powerful and when their magic is most powerful during that season. But our main character, she's one of the exceptions where she is the most powerful witch of i guess the whole all the seasons the year everything because she is that one exception where in history there's this ancient all-powerful witch through spring summer autumn and winter she her magic never falters so it's basically up to her to stop what's happening during these seasons that the other witches and witches magical school don't understand what's going on and so it's up to her they rely on her to use her powers but it's basically a coming of age story because she is not comfortable in her own skin especially with her magic she's not comfortable she doesn't want to be this extraordinary witch she just wants to be a normal witch she doesn't like that each season her mood changes so for instance if she's in love with someone during summer when it turns into autumn she doesn't love them anymore so she has to kind of fall in love again each season and so that it kind of exhausts her and tires her and she's like why can't I just be normal and there's a lot more to the story that I want to give away but it was so good I would say this is a comfort read so this is like perfect seasonal delight so if you just want to like cozy by the fire or just be cozy during autumn this gives super strong autumn vibe and I love throughout the story that so there's spring winter autumn and summer so you go through the different seasons with the main character with her and her witch powers and what happens during each each season and it's it's so good and it even has dark academia aspect to it because she goes to this witch academy this witch school where she's also with other witches just had all the elements i like and like i said perfect seasonal read and even this is a normal edition, and each normal edition has a stunning, 
stunning, stunning butter. It was a comfort read. Highly, highly recommend. Definite one of my favorites of all time. Well, guys, that's it for this wrap-up. Until I see you guys again in my next video, have a great day. Bye.